What do long COVID, histamine intolerance and ME-CFS all have in common? They are all unsolved medical puzzles with unsatisfactory medical treatments that severely affect the lives of millions of people and their families globally. In today's episode, we're going to share the groundbreaking insights of Dr. Greg Russell-Jones, who has been instrumental in Elliot's recovery from extreme fatigue. Don't miss this because it's been life-changing for me. <laughs> In this episode, we're going to share with you the lessons in biochemistry that we've been taught by Dr. Greg Russell-Jones, and they really have formed the framework that we've used to heal Elliot from the inside out. Greg has given us his very generous and very kind permission to share his research and findings so that hopefully many more in this ME community will be able to share the same benefits as Elliot has. Back to the original question, what does long COVID, histamine intolerance and ME-CFS all have in common? Well, they're all conditions that can be caused by a shortage of just two vitamins, namely vitamin B2, which is known as riboflavin, and vitamin B12. I will try and take this slowly because I know that it can be really quite overwhelming in the beginning. But this video really could be by far the most important video that you are ever going to watch. Learning the biochemistry behind how our metabolism works has been crucial for Elliot's recovery. This isn't personalised advice because the information we're sharing with you is just our own experience and it's for educational purposes only. We are going to explain how every single cell in our body can optimise energy production. So, let's spend a moment discussing what's happening inside our cells. We're going to zoom right in and find out what's causing the problem with energy production. It's estimated that we have over 37 trillion cells in our body. I don't know how many zeros that is, but it's a huge number. And we have so many different types of cells in our body that all do different functions. So we have red blood cells that carry our oxygen around our body. We have nerve cells, we have muscle cells, we have brain cells. The number and the diversity of our cells is just mind-blowing. And then inside every one of those cells are thousands of different types of enzymes. And each type of enzyme is like a tiny little machine that does a different job in that cell. So in any typical cells, there are millions of enzyme molecules working to keep us alive and functioning. Each of these enzymes needs different vitamins and minerals. Some are needed to actually make the enzyme in the first place, and then other vitamins and minerals are used by the enzyme to perform a specific task, such as a chemical reaction that creates a new molecule that our body needs to do a particular job. To make energy, our cells need to have the right ingredients and the B vitamins are just really important in this process. We're going to look very closely at just two B vitamins. We're going to look at vitamin B2, which is also known as riboflavin, and vitamin B12. And these two vitamins work together to support hundreds of different enzymes in our bodies with a process known as methylation. Now, the methylation process is needed to make some really important molecules that our cells need for energy. You've probably heard of some of them, such as coenzyme Q10 and creatine. So let's put this into perspective because there are two really big reactions that are happening in your body right now that are keeping you alive. The most important one is the production of ATP, which you are probably aware of is the molecule that our body uses as energy. Methylation is the second most important reaction in the body after our body has made the ATP because over 40% of all the methylation reactions goes into making creatine and creatine is essential inside our cells to store the energy that's been made as ATP until our bodies use it. Our enzymes need vitamins B2 and vitamin B12 to make the molecule that our brains and muscles need for energy. So for anyone with fatigue issues of any diagnosis, this video will give you absolutely essential information. Is it just a simple job to supplement vitamin B2 and vitamin B12 and then we'll all be fixed? Well, it might be. Some people are vitamin B12 deficient and that can be caused by a number of different reasons, such as being a vegetarian. 
Not all vegetarians are aware that fruit and vegetables don't contain vitamin B12, and so supplementing B12 is essential if you're not eating meat. And when I say essential, I really can't highlight that enough because without having active B12, your future is very bleak. There's a really good film based on a true story called Sally Potchalock. I'm not very good at pronouncing words, Sally. Just look up Sally B12 on YouTube. It's a really good film to watch if you want to know how important vitamin B12 is. Also, some people can't absorb the B12 that they eat, and that's for a, a number of reasons, such as they might have a condition called pernicious anemia, or maybe they're using some sort of medications that are known to block the absorption of vitamin B12. Medications such as protein pump inhibitors, metformin, or if you've used laughing gas, those can all affect your B12 levels. So getting your vitamin B12 levels tested is a really important first step to check. Although some people do look as though they have plenty of vitamin B12 when they have their blood levels checked, or they might even look as though they have excessively high levels. But their cells can't use it because it's not been activated. This is known as paradoxical B12 deficiency because it looks like they have very high amounts of vitamin B12, but it's not in an activated form and their bodies can't use it. So the question is, how does vitamin B12 become activated? This is where vitamin B2 or riboflavin comes into play. B2 is a really amazing vitamin. It's like a key that unlocks many of the other B vitamins. But for our bodies to use the molecules of riboflavin, the riboflavin, or vitamin B2, has to be activated by enzymes. And those enzymes require three different minerals. These crucial minerals are iodine, selenium, and molybdenum. Oh, I hate pronouncing things. I think, I think it's pronounced molybdenum, but it might be molybdenum. So our bodies need iodine, selenium and molybdenum to activate vitamin B2. And once B2 has been activated, that can activate vitamin B12. Okay, so we're going to check the science of what we've been talking about. So please bear with me. Gradually, this will all start to make sense to you, but I know it can be really tough going in the beginning. Maybe you could let me know in the comments if you feel I need to adjust the level of the information if it's just too deep or if it's just about right. The science is that there are two active forms of vitamin B2, and these are known as FMN and FAD. And so to make these molecules of active B2, our body needs iodine, selenium, and moly. Because both FMN and FAD are used by the methylation enzymes, which are MTHFR and MTRR, and those enzymes are used to activate vitamin B12. So the point is that without enough active B12, about 200 methylation enzymes will slow right down. And that will result in fatigue, brain fog, high histamine levels, and loads of other nasty issues. You may have already watched our video on how Elliot was really depleted in creatine and what an amazing difference happened when he started to supplement it. Well, would it surprise you to learn that one of the main jobs methylation does is to produce creatine? So if you're like Elliot and find that supplementing creatine has had a really big impact on your energy levels, then it's going to be fairly safe to conclude that your body isn't able to make enough itself due to some deficiency in one of those ingredients that's needed. There is actually a blood test. Doctors often measure your creatinine levels to check to see if your kidneys are working properly. So if your creatinine levels are in the bottom third or below the range, then you probably don't have enough creatine in your cells which means that your body is struggling with those methylation reactions to produce energy and to produce creatine. But that's not all that active B2 does, because those little molecules of FMN and FAD also activate about 100 other B2-dependent enzymes that do all their own jobs. And then they also activate about another 100 vitamin B6-dependent enzymes that all do their own jobs. And having active vitamin B6 is really essential for many of the brain chemicals that we need to keep our mood stable. The active vitamin 2 also activates vitamin B1, and vitamin B1 is essential for being able to use the carbohydrates in our food. It activates vitamin D, it converts the beta-carotene that we eat into vitamin A, it 
works with vitamin K and it also recycles folate. So to recap, basically everyone needs to have iodine, selenium and molybdenum in their diets so that they can activate riboflavin, which then can activate heaps of other vitamins such as B1, B6, B12, vitamins A, vitamin D, vitamin K. And so yes, a deficiency in any one of those minerals will have a knock-on effect reducing the efficiency of all those vitamins. So it is absolutely crucial for your good health. So just a reminder, vitamin B2 is like the key that unlocks a whole load of processes in our cells. And just one deficiency in any of those minerals, such as iodine, selenium, or molybdenum, that activates vitamin B2 will cause a problem in our cells and it'll stop all those amazing little enzymes from doing their job of producing energy. Our body is just so amazingly well designed that it can make energy using three different pathways. Our cells can use carbohydrates, fats and protein to create energy, but you won't be surprised to know that all three of those processes need to have active B2 at some point in the process. But that's why in some conditions such as hypothyroidism, where the thyroid gland is underactive, people put on weight and feel exhausted because their thyroid is missing the minerals that we've been talking about. And so they store calories as fat rather than burning them to make energy. So the question is, how do we fix it? We only need these nutrients in really tiny amounts, but we do need them every day. And it's always best to try and obtain the nutrients we need from food. But the problem is, even if you do eat really well, the soil quality and the storage time and the food processing of our food can significantly reduce the levels of the nutrients in our food. Also, our age and the medications that we're on and having digestive issues can affect what we actually absorb. So what types of foods are these minerals in? Here's some food ideas that provide the recommended daily intake. The recommended daily amount that an adult needs of iodine is 150 micrograms, although a lady that is considering getting pregnant or is lactating needs more than this. Iodine can be found in three ounces of cod or three tablespoons of seaweed, such as nori. Some countries have added iodine to their salt, but this is really hard to find in the UK. It's not on the supermarket shelves. Now let's talk about selenium and the recommended daily amount of selenium is only 55 micrograms, slightly more if you're breastfeeding. So natural sources of selenium are found in seafood, such as sardines, and dairy is a really good source, as well as liver, which was Elliot's favorite. So they actually do give selenium to cows to increase milk production, and some forms of cheese, such as the Jarlsberg cheese in Europe, has especially high levels of selenium in it. Most people will think of a Brazil nut as being a really good source of selenium, but Gred says that in functional B2 and B12 deficiency, the form of selenium that is found in Brazil nuts won't work. And again, this is another form that I can't pronounce, so I'll, I'll put it on the screen. So molly, molly, the adult amount of molybdenum required is only 45 micrograms. That's a really tiny amount and it can be found in beans, oats, and animal liver. So an interesting thing to note is that beans and legumes need to have molybdenum in the soil for them to grow. If you're eating a good amount of beans and legumes every day, you're likely to be getting enough molybdenum because you only need a tiny amount, but you do need it. So I'm sure we're gonna talk about liver in lots of other videos because in my opinion, it's a superfood. And Elliot really did love having an ounce of chicken liver every day for years. But look at him now, it worked. If you'd like to know more about these minerals, I'd recommend looking up the National Institute of Health Office of Dietary Supplements website. I'll put it on the screen. And on that website, there are fact sheets for health professionals, which provide really excellent information on all the vitamins and minerals. And something else that I found really useful was a free app that I used to use to check Elliot's diet called Chronometer and it will provide a daily report. So I'd really highly recommend that you record your food intake for several days, and you might be really surprised at what you find out. Unfortunately, it hasn't got a very big database on molybdenum, but I'm gonna be preparing a video to come out soon on how to use chronometer when it's ready. I'll link it here. Because when Elliot was really ill, 
he was having really big issues just trying to eat and we were spending all day spoon feeding him because the hospital wouldn't consider him suitable for a feeding tube. It was really important to make sure that every spoonful of food that he ate was as nutritionally dense as possible. So that chronometer app has just been invaluable to us at keeping Elliot alive. But something that you really do need to be aware of is that when you've been deficient in any vitamin or mineral for a while, it can be really tricky to bring it back in. Elliot was just incredibly sensitive to iodine and vitamin B12, and he actually ended up in the back of an ambulance three times. His body just completely overreacted to a tiny bit of it with his heart racing. It was really scary. As we've seen, these vitamins and minerals start up so many really powerful processes. So if you are deficient in several or even just one of these minerals, you can experience some really big reactions. If you can tell from your diet that you're not eating the foods that we talked about earlier, then it's likely that you will have a deficiency. So it is really important that you don't rush straight into taking the recommended daily amount of any of the minerals. It's probably best that you took advice from a qualified dietitian or a nutritionist before starting any supplements anyway. Also, I have to say that there is so much bad advice out on the internet that encourages people to restrict their diets, especially when it looks as though you're sensitive to particular foods. But cutting out foods from your diet is a really bad idea. I really regret restricting some of the foods that Elliot ate. For example, cutting out dairy from Elliot's diet seemed to help him for a couple of weeks, but in the long run it just created many more deficiencies for him, especially as dairy is probably the main way to get iodine and selenium from food in the UK. And that had such a big knock-on effect at reducing the amount of creatine that his body could make, causing his fatigue to get so much worse. It really is a much better idea to work out the root cause of the problem and sort out the deficiencies that are causing the issues. So, how do you find out if you need more of these minerals then? There are several tests that Dr. Greg uses to analyse how your metabolism is functioning. And we're going to go through these in fine detail in our next video that explains his protocol. But briefly, there's a hair mineral analysis test, a urine test and several blood tests that we order. And we can collect them at home. So we could still find out even when Elliot was bedridden. So Elliot had actually already had some of these blood tests done by our doctor and they'd always come back as being normal, as is the case with most people that have ME, CFS and long COVID. But Greg uses his own range to analyse the tests and it's based on optimal levels for healthy people rather than the ranges that the doctors go by. So if you can gather your test information that you can get hold of from your doctors, and watch along with our next video and we'll go through Dr. Greg Russell Jones's protocol and that will help your body to activate the vitamin B2 and the vitamin B12 that you need to make energy. And we'll look at the issues that Elliot had because he did have a lot when he was trying to restock his body with the nutrients that he needed.